we continue our Congress and we have our next speaker ready. Yes. Please, Dr. Vayekov, it's your turn. Please turn on the sound and Yes, my sound is turned on, as I understand. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, uh, Dmitry, as uh, yesterday we tested, can you uh, make a screen so that I could... Uh, do you see my screen already? No, not yet. Please uh, click the uh, green button and start sharing. Mm -hmm. Okay, please select the uh, only the part of the screen so we can see not the whole screen. Do you see everything is okay? Is it okay now? Yes, now it's perfect. Right. Okay, Fine. enjoy your time and enjoy lecture by Dr. Vaikov. Okay, welcome. Thank you very much for the uh, 24th invitation to participate in this Science, Information and Spirit Congress, Constantine. And uh, this time I was thinking what to talk about. And as Konstantin and others uh, are concerned about the current state of uh, health of humanity, I'm also uh, interested very much in what's going on with this uh, coronavirus all over the world and uh, what uh, mm, approaches uh, people uh, try uh, to, uh, to implement in order to fight this disease. And I recalled that a hundred years ago when there was a much more uh, severe uh, pandemic all over the world, Constantine already mentioned it, that the Spanish uh, flu, uh, there were uh, also a lot of different approaches to treat this disease. And I recollected that there were two very simple approaches which helped a lot to many people, but they were nearly completely forgotten. One was hydrogen peroxide treatment. And there was a paper published in Lancet in 1918 where uh, the medical doctors who used intravenous uh, injection of hydrogen, dilute, of course, uh, highly diluted hydrogen peroxide. Uh, this, um, uh, decreased the, uh, the, the, uh, the death toll from uh, Spanish flu by about uh, 80%. And also there was data that uh, bicarbonate uh, also helped uh, very much uh, for those people who were uh, dying and were suffering from uh, um, Spanish flu. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, during this pandemic, uh, very few people uh, reco recollect that these very simple and very cheap approaches may, uh, if not cure, but at least uh, uh, at least uh, help a lot uh, to those who are suffering uh, from uh, this disease, uh, because this is the disease, like many many others, disease is a disease of bioenergetics because it. Uh, uh, hampers respiration. And uh, when uh, I was studying uh, the properties of aqua system, especially of bicarbonate aqua systems, uh, I came to conclusion that the most important uh, uh, function of uh, water and bicarbonate is a function uh, to support respiration or uh, respiration or breathing. So uh, when I'm talking about life supporting uh, features of uh, bicarbonate aqua solution, uh, I will just uh, make a trivial uh, statement that life is impossible uh, without respiration. And everybody knows, of course, that aerobic respiration is the primary source of energy for all the organism. Even 
I don't have time to discuss it uh, more deeply to those organisms that are considered uh, to be anaerobic. They are not uh, anaerobic at all. Simply, they need a very small quantity of oxygen. So, aerobic respiration is the primary source of energy for all the organism. And what is uh, respiration? Uh, when we start uh, to uh, study uh, some um, uh, 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 some uh, big uh, area in biology, for example, it is very good to uh, return to the origins. And the uh, respiration, as uh, well everybody knows, was discovered in uh, the end of the 18th century by the French uh, uh, chemist and biologist Antoine Lavoisier, uh, who uh, defined it as a slow combustion of carbon and hydrogen, similar in every way to, to that which takes place in lighted candle. And breathing animals are active combustible bodies that are burning and wasting away. So what? Uh, so the here is uh, at the uh, figure uh, at this picture. You can see really a lighting uh, lighted candle. Uh, but we know that uh, usually uh, most of the animals do not light, but they still uh, still combust carbon and hydrogen. And as a matter of fact, uh, most energy and most expensive energy, energy of high quality uh, is obtained when hydrogen uh, reduces oxygen and the product of this reduction, which may go uh, mostly in mitochondria and also in other places uh, about which we'll speak uh, later on, this product is water. So when uh, uh, oxygen is reduced, uh, molecule of oxygen is reduced by four atoms of hydrogen, two water molecules are, appear, and a lot of energy, which in the form of uh, energy equivalent to light, is uh, released. Uh, what happens to carbon? Uh, carbon is also oxidized uh, by uh, oxygen to carbon dioxide. Uh, this uh, reaction gives less uh, energy and less quality energy, uh, but uh, two uh, products uh, of uh, uh, these um, uh, reactions, two reactions appear, that is water and carbon di dioxide. And so that's why uh, Lavoisier called animals are active combustible bodies that are burning, burning usually carbohydrates or fats and wasting away. Wasting, uh, as uh, most people just uh, accustomed to think, wasting away water and carbon dioxide. But in fact, uh, water and carbon dioxide are not just waste product of respiration, but they're its active participants. And what I'll be talking about uh, in my further uh, presentation is the function of both uh, water and carbon dioxide as uh, not just participant of respiration, uh, but uh, vehicles of respiration. And uh, as a matter of fact, respiration may be considered as water burning catalyzed by uh, carbon dioxide. That's what I'll be talking uh, about. Now, the first participant of respiration is just uh, water. Uh, strange uh, as it may seem because, uh, well, uh, the respiration according to Lavoisier is burning, uh, though slow burning. And how can water burn? We know that water fights burning. But in fact, that's what we know. But some people knew and discovered it more than 200 years ago, that water is the necessary combustion catalyst. It was discovered by in uh, uh, the, the same uh, time when Lavoisier discovered uh, respiration by the British uh, chemist Elizabeth Fulham. Uh, she wrote a, an essay on combustion in which she uh, described uh, such a discovery that she made, that dry coal do not burn in dry air. And uh, in, for coal uh, to burn, uh, you need to have at least traces of water. And she wrote that carbon attracts the oxygen of the water and forms carbonic acid, 
while hydrogen of the water unites with oxygen of the air and forms a new quantity of, wa uh, of water equal to that decomposed. So uh, on this scheme uh, below, uh, this, uh, there is uh, the description of her uh, discovery. Carbon uh, is not uh, oxidized directly by oxygen. It is oxidized according to full came by oxygen, which belong to water molecules. And water molecules split into oxygen, which goes to carbon and to hydrogen atoms, which become free and which unite with oxygen and give again to water molecules. So in this uh, reaction, which was very interesting reaction, which was described by uh, uh, Fulheim, water works as a catalyst uh, on one hand, because without water, uh, carbon cannot unite with oxygen. Uh, so water, uh, it uh, disappears and then it appears and again it disappears. So it rotates this uh, combustion reaction. But in fact, if we return back to the, uh, the combustion of car carbon and hydrogen, it turns out uh, from this reaction that oxygen uh, is, um, it's, uh, oxygen takes place from hydrogen. And here we see combustion, combustion of water. So carbon burning is equivalent to water combustion. That's a very strange reaction. So it was discovered, as I said, more than 200 years ago, and still uh, very, very few chemists uh, know about this reaction, though this reaction was dis dis rediscovered several times during these two centuries. And just recently, at the beginning of this uh, century already, uh, the American inventor John Kansas, uh, he found the conditions under which water was really burning, burning uh, in a sense that it was emitting light and uh, the temperature of this burning was very, very high. So if he put salted water, what is interesting, not very pure water, but salted water uh, into uh, the action of the radio waves, a radio, uh, 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 radio generator, uh, then uh, sparkling this uh, water uh, um, caused water burning and you could, could see flame temperature which increased uh, to such tremendous figures 1500 degrees and this water was burning until it uh, completely disappeared. So this was discovered in 2007. Uh, it was rare uh, reproduced by Professor Rustrom Roy from Pennsylvania University two years uh, later, and again practically forgotten because uh, for most people it was simply very difficult to understand, understand how water can split into hydrogen and oxygen, uh, and hydrogen can be given to, um, to, uh, to oxygen and reduce it to back to water. Now, if to, uh, from the uh, common uh, understanding of uh, water uh, structure, this is really impossible. But from the works uh, which were started by uh, Gerald Pollock um, about two decades ago, uh, he discovered that water wetting hydrophilic surfaces uh, constitute a peculiar water phase. Uh, which he called exclusion zone water. So that means that this water phase doesn't dissolve in it like usual about water, uh, different substances, including uh, molecules, water soluble molecules, including gases, for example, uh, oxygen is not um, it's, uh, dissolved in this water. So it's uh, physical and many other physical properties are very different from uh, usual bulk water to which we are accustomed. Uh, as a matter of fact, the, uh, the, um, uh, the uh, size of this zone uh, may be very high. It may propagate, propagate for uh, hundreds of microns up to millimeter from the, uh, from the hydrophilic surface. 
And what is most uh, one of the most important features of this uh, exclusion zone water? Uh, the most uh, important feature is that it is uh, uh, charged and it bears a negative uh, charge. Uh, so uh, most important trait uh, of exclusion zone water for bioenergetics, uh, which is important for bioenergetics, that is neg negatively charged. That it means that it has excess of easily uh, acceptable uh, electrons and it has electron donating and reducing uh, properties. Uh, so uh, they uh, are in an excited or quasi free state and they may be donated to appropriate uh, acceptors. And another feature uh, to which we'll come a little later that this low density energy, that low density energy, for example, infrared electromagnetic waves, uh, which are equivalent to usual uh, heat uh, or warmth, uh, supports electron donating properties of exclusion zone uh, water. So if this water can donate electrons, who are electrons acceptors, which are uh, mostly widely uh, uh, accessible in this, uh, in our world, that are oxygen, which is dissolved in bulk water. So in principle, uh, exclusion zone water can be uh, the electron donor and uh, electron donor, uh, mm, uh, uh, which uh, also when it is split into electrons and uh, protons, protons are here. And so these uh, four electrons plus four protons uh, can reduce oxygen molecular. And the result of this reduction is again water molecular plus energy, energy uh, of uh, electronic uh, excitation. So negatively charged easy water is the source of ele electrons and this reaction is the source of uh, energy. Uh, the unique <coughs> property of this water is that products of its oxidation with oxygen are against water molecules and oxygen. How can it be? Two water molecules are burnt and the products are again oxygen and two water molecules and energy. What is the source of this energy? Uh, the source of this energy is uh, increase in entropy in the system due to conversion of structured uh, quasi uh, crystalline uh, exclusion zone water into much less organized by bulk water. And so this energy, which is released in principle, it can be used to uh, utilize uh, the, uh, to perform uh, useful uh, work. Uh, so if, the, if this water uh, degrades, uh, this uh, uh, water becomes uh, burned uh, completely into uh, less organized water, how can uh, we get again uh, this energy back? How can this process can go uh, continuously? And uh, another discovery, important discovery, which was made uh, by uh, Gerald Pollock is that uh, under the action of uh, environmental radiation, that is infrared radiation, which is everywhere practically uh, uh, under the action of worms, the uh, worms, uh, the uh, uh, disorganized bulk water uh, can return back into, can organize uh, uh, back into the structured water, easy water. So this process of water burning in principle uh, can uh, mm, uh, donate energy and this energy uh, can be ex another uh, uh, energy of infrared energy can be accepted from the environment and then the exclusion zone water uh, is uh, recovered. Uh, so this is uh, the principle of water burning can, uh, which can be the source of energy. But in order for this process to continue to go on, uh, so of course, some perturbations should be done. Like you have a fuel and this fuel can be used as a fuel only when you excite it or when you give some uh, catalyst uh, to this water, uh, to this uh, fuel, and then the process of burning begin to uh, develop uh, further uh, and further. 
So what is the major, what is the major um, uh, catalyst uh, for this water burning, which is uh, uh, acceptable practically everywhere? Uh, this, now we come to the second participant uh, of, the, of this uh, energy uh, donating process. Uh, spontaneous water oxidation burning occurs in the presence of catalyst and natural catalysts of water burning are bicarbonates and uh, carbonates. So just baking soda or uh, carbon dioxide dissolved in water, which uh, converts into uh, bicarbonate are the catalysts of water burning. And that's what about we'll uh, talk about. So participant number two of respiration or breathing or uh, water oxidation is uh, B is uh, car are carbonates. In fact, if we just uh, look around, then we'll understand that all real waters, including all biological uh, liquids, are complex aqueous systems uh, containing representatives of the family of uh, carbonates. What we know best are uh, carbonate, uh, di carbon dioxide in gases form, uh, the carbon dioxide dissolved in water, which converts into uh, carbonic acid, uh, which dissociates and converts into bicarbonate, which is, uh, uh, which is a lot of which is in our blood and in uh, our cells also. And a lot of bicarbonate and carbonate is all uh, present in all environmental uh, waters. As a matter of fact, if you even manage to get water without uh, uh, bicarbonate and uh, carbonates, very, very pure water, and you begin to uh, somehow to work with this water, don't forget that in your exhale, there is about 5% of carbon uh, dioxide. And this carbon dioxide easily dissolves in water. So water with which you are dealing uh, very, very fast becomes the bicarbonate solution. Now, aerobic respiration is, as uh, Lavoisier uh, uh, stated, is a very slow combustion of carbon and hydrogen, similar in every way to that takes place in lighted uh, candle. And we return big, uh, back to this uh, equation from which we started uh, our uh, presentation that um, the, any uh, fat, any um, hydro, uh, uh, any sugars, when they are burned, the uh, product of their burning is carbon dioxide. So in uh, carbon dioxide and carbonates, uh, carbonates are always arise in the cause of respiration and they are necessary uh, for it. Uh, as I to uh, told at the very beginning, the bicarbonate uh, helped a lot uh, against many, many uh, diseases, and that was uh, checked, uh, and that was uh, repeatedly uh, demonstrated uh, for uh, after just the discovery that uh, uh, carbonates are vitally needed for, needed for normal respiration, and this discovery was made uh, about 150 years ago by uh, uh, Swiss uh, chemist and uh, biologist Mischer. As a matter of fact, he was also the discoverer of DNA, uh, where he uh, uh, stated that over the oxygen supplies of the body, carbon dioxide spreads is, uh, its protective wings. That means that if we do not produce enough carbon dioxide during respiration, or if we do not uh, get uh, enough uh, bicarbonate uh, from, our, from the environment for, with our food, then uh, oxygen supply of the body becomes deficient. And uh, without uh, the product of respiration, respiration also uh, becomes uh, damped. Uh, it becomes more and more deficient. For example, the cause of mountains uh, sickness uh, is deficient, deficiency of carbonates in the body rather than deficiency of oxygen in the air. Everybody can make a very and knows about very simple uh, uh, experiment that if you breathe very uh, deeply and very fast, one can lose consciousness. 
uh, that seems strange because you get a lot of oxygen, but you get uh, get rid of uh, carbon dioxide and uh, respiration practically uh, stops. Uh, so uh, big, uh, carbon dioxide is uh, needed very much uh, for our respiration. And when there are problems, uh, then uh, the not uh, better to breathe not pure oxygen or uh, uh, very intensive air, but oxygen and air supplemented with 5-10% of carbon dioxide. Uh, it was used in 1930s as a cure against uh, poisoning with five fumes, side effects of ether and chloroform narcosis, and support of treatment, uh, um, uh, supported treatment of many diseases. Uh, by the way, it's completely forgotten because now when they use all these uh, devices for respiration, they give it pure oxygen without uh, addition of carbon dioxide. Uh, then most respiratory exercises result in accumulation of carbonates, uh, carbonates in the body. Uh, carbonates have re a regulatory effect at the cellular level. And uh, I just give uh, only a few a couple of examples uh, there are a lot of them that bicarbonate ions are necessary for efficient DNA synthesis in primary hepatocyte cultures. Everybody who is working with cell cultures knows that uh, it is uh, good to keep these cultures in atmosphere of 5% five, 5 uh, carbon dioxide. Uh, otherwise, they do not grow and they do not perform their uh, function. Uh, bicarbonates even are now, uh, work at molecular level. For example, they modulate activity of such uh, as many enzymes and proteins. Uh, they uh, function as antioxidants. Uh, they eliminate hydroxyl radi radicals. And uh, what is the reason uh, of their such very wide uh, mm, the, uh, range of functions is uh, as usually people say, they uh, regulate uh, acid uh, alkaline balance in, uh, in the body or in aqueous system. That's true. Uh, but uh, what is much less known and what we also uh, studied, uh, and I would say that even discovered uh, several uh, many years ago, is that carbonates participate in the process associated with generation, transformation, and the accumulation of energy in living systems, in particular in the process of water burning. So again, I return to this very bizarre equation. Um, the water burning with oxygen gives oxygen and water. And the, uh, the uh, bicarbonates here are the um, catalysts of this uh, process. So, we discussed, uh, dis discovered using electron paramagnetic resonance method that continuous generation of super superoxide radical that is the first uh, product of water reduction with oxygen takes place in all bicarbonate aqueous solutions. And also if uh, to add uh, iron salts to, in catalytic quantities to bicarbonate solution, that results in the development of, of a way wave of photon emission and water burning is uh, accompanied with uh, photon emission. So this both observation prove that bicarbonate waters contain reactive oxygen species and uh, because uh, oxygen incess in is incessantly oxidizes and uh, or burns uh, water. Uh, for example, when we uh, have a bicarbonate solution and add uh, iron salt in catalytic quantities to these uh, waters, this results uh, in, to, in the development of a wave of luminol amplified photon emission from water. Luminol is the probe for reactive oxygen species. And when it is uh, reduced with this reactive oxygen species, then the, it, it is followed with a flash of photon emission. And this flash of photon emission may be uh, registered using uh, photo multipliers. So that uh, you can take, uh, get, uh, add another, uh, uh, another portion of this reagent with luminol to this water. And again, you have this uh, flash of photon, uh, photon emission. 
thus uh, this indicates that the process in which reactive oxygen species put this, uh, 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 um, arise, uh, this process continuously go in uh, bicarbonate uh, waters. Even in those waters, uh, most of those waters which we use for uh, drinking. As a matter of fact, waters in which uh, there is no, uh, for example, acidic waters and so on, in which this process is uh, uh, goes very very slowly, uh, they are less uh, good uh, to your less good to your health. Uh, when we begin to study what uh, this this process of water which goes on which goes on uh, in um, bicarbonate solutions, uh, then we uh, observed that uh, this uh, this process of uh, water burning uh, has circadian rhythms. For example, uh, you take a bottle of uh, bicarbonate water or drinking water, and you look at the uh, the, the amplitude of this uh, photon emission from this water on addition of this reagent. And one can see a circadian written 24 hour written which is going on in this water. And uh, so suddenly, sometimes suddenly, uh, the photon em emission flash becomes much less intense from this water. And this less intensity, as it turned out, is correlated to uh, the uh, 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 different uh, cosmophysical uh, phenomena. For example, here uh, the minimal photon emission was at the time of new moon. And then when moon begin uh, to become older and older, again, water become uh, be the uh, water burning or uh, energy produced by water, it became more and more uh, in in intense. Uh, what was uh, also uh, very interesting that if you add uh, 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 something uh, which intensifies water burning, for example, hydrogen peroxide, which is also reactive oxygen species, and uh, to the bicarbonate water, then uh, this uh, water begins to burn much more intensively, and it is uh, the intensity of uh, photon emission from this water becomes very high, especially in the pres presence of luminol. And this uh, water begin to burn for very, very long uh, period uh, of time. Hermetically closed bicarbonate solutions activated with only 500% uh, percent, uh, of hydrogen peroxide uh, can mm, uh, emit photons for many months, even in complete uh, darkness. Uh, here is one of the hundreds of experiments which we performed uh, uh, in order to see if water is really continuously produces this light, uh, can produce this light energy. This is photon emission uh, from the sample one milliliter of water, uh, which uh, the, uh, was added to it uh, at this time point, and here are months months uh, during which uh, water was burning and still even uh, about one year and a half, it, uh, the light uh, photon emission from this water uh, was uh, still very intense. Uh, patterns of photon emission from activated bicarbonate solution are affected by low intensity uh, influences. As water um, photon emission induced by uh, iron uh, is uh, sensitive uh, to moon phase, uh, uh, water is also sensitive uh, to such uh, changes, uh, to such, uh, mm, uh, such uh, uh, cosmic phenomena as moon and sun eclipses. And I will give you one example what happened to this continuous burning of water with traces of hydrogen peroxide. Uh, during a long uh, period of observation. First, you can also see uh, in the um, before moon eclipse, just normal uh, cosmophysical and the normal cosmophysical conditions, you can see here the uh, circadian rhythms. Uh, the, during the daytime intensity is higher, during the nighttime it's lower. And I would, uh, would uh, also wanted to stress that what is standing in completely a uh, dark uh, uh, box. Now, when there is uh, a moon eclipse, when it starts, 
uh, starts, uh, intensity of water burning in, in, increases uh, two, three fold. And when even moon eclipse here is finished, this very high intensity in water burning continues for about two days. Then it uh, falls down, so, uh, then it, it, uh, intensity returns to original, uh, original uh, value. And, but still, again, for several days after moon eclipse, uh, water is not still. It is flashes more or less uh, intensely. Uh, okay, uh, now uh, other also uh, cosmophysical factors affect uh, water burning. Uh, for example, bicarbonate solution activity or intensity of its burning correlates with fluctuations of the geomagnetic field. For example, uh, during this period of time, there the sun was not uh, uh, calm, uh, it was active, and during this period of time, there were several geomagnetic storms. This red line is AP index, that is intensity of geomagnetic uh, fluctuation on Earth, which are correlated to sun activity. One uh, geomagnetic storm, another geomagnetic storm, third, fourth, and if to look at uh, photon emission from water, you, see, you can see how, uh, how uh, high correlation is intensity of water burning with the geomagnetic uh, uh, storm. Uh, I do not have time to show you what happened to water burning during sun eclipse. Even the uh, eclipse was not in our region, but on the another side of the planet but water still also felt sun eclipses. Now, uh, uh, we come to uh, such a conclusion from all this uh, observation, that carbonates participate in the processes related to uh, generation, transformation, and accumulation of energy in aqueous system because they catalyze water burning. Let's again return to this uh, bizarre equation, water, burning with oxygen uh, occurs in the presence of carbonates in the system. And these carbonates uh, also do not disappear because in a uh, hermetically closed, uh, hermetically, uh, closed uh, uh, test tube, uh, the process of this burning uh, continues for very, very long uh, period of time. So neither carbonates uh, do not uh, disappear no, of course, water and oxygen, they also do not disappear. They continuously uh, uh, re uh, recover uh, during all this uh, process. And what is the source of energy feeding uh, activated bicarbonate solution and supporting them in a stable non-equilibrium state for uh, many uh, months? Uh, this source of energy is low density energy uh, or infrared energy or heat from the environment. Uh, so what uh, all uh, this uh, is about? That bicarbonate aqueous solutions, and I uh, again would like to mention that practically all waters on Earth, practically and in our bodies and in bodies on all uh, living things are bicarbonate active, active um, uh, aqueous solutions, they uh, uh, perform uh, this uh, very strange uh, reaction, which uh, is the source of uh, energy, a source of high density energy, which is equivalent uh, to light. Uh, from this uh, uh, observation, it follows that aqua systems are not generators of energy, as a matter of fact. They are step up transformers of energy. Then they transform uh, what we usually uh, considered to be as waste energy of heat into high grade free energy of uh, light. Uh, so activated bicarbonate solutions with the efficiency of 100, uh, practically 100 percent, uh, convert all uh, available heat energy into light energy. So the, this energy which can be used for performance of all forms of work. 
and uh, say, uh, now aqueous uh, systems, uh, practically all aqueous systems, uh, in which liquid crystalline water and quasi chaotic bulk water coexist. So liquid crystalline is easy water. You need some uh, hydrophilic surfaces to have this water. And you have some uh, need to have some excess of water, which is not converted into easy water and they coexist. And that are practically all aqua system. Uh, so uh, in which charge separation between these two phases, easy water or liquid crystalline water and bulk water is ensured. And the experiments show that practically in all aqua system, this char charge separation is ensured in uh, which electron flow from this uh, coherent, I call the quasi-crystalline water, of course, coherent highly organized water to oxygen present in valve water is provided by catalysis with, for example, bicarbonates as uh, most abundant catalysts. They can transform external low uh, density energy into organized uh, coherent free uh, energy. And the process of energy transformation may react to subtle resonant influences from the environment. Uh, if to look uh, with a much uh, just more generally in uh, all these aqua systems, which are abundant, which are practically everywhere around us, not only on Earth, but uh, as we now know on other planets of uh, solar system, uh, where there is uh, liquid water was found. Uh, so these uh, all aqua systems meet the uh, all known criteria of living state. They convert uh, uh, accessible, uh, the, the dissipated uh, energy from the environment. They concentrate this energy to high de density energy and they perform useful work, work for uh, their uh, survival. Uh, is, on the other hand, they are very uh, it's, uh, it's sensitive to subtle resonant influence, uh, influences from the environment. And this usually all these influences are electromagnetic, uh, uh, electromagnetic fluctuations, uh, which uh, uh, somehow modulate this uh, process of uh, energy uh, production uh, from water. So this, uh, this is the, uh, the necessary condition for such system function is availability of enough energy, thermal of, uh, or infrared or other to support liquid state of water. So whenever you have enough uh, infrared energy uh, to melt water, then already the above mentioned conditions are um, uh, be, begin to be uh, to, uh, uh, begin uh, to, to function. Uh, so the same condition is needed for spontaneous emergence, existence, and self-organization development of living si systems in the forms uh, known of uh, on Earth. From uh, all these properties, uh, not very well known properties of water and better to say bicarbonate aqua solution, it follows uh, one very mm, important thing that whenever you have a liquid water, you already have uh, li life. And in order to support life, and keep it uh, uh, energetic and uh, let it survive, all these conditions uh, should, uh, um, uh, should apply. So that's what I wanted uh, to tell you uh, in this uh, presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. And uh, I hope very much, like Konstantin said in his um, uh, talk, uh, that all the problems which we meet uh, in our uh, lifetime, uh, they simply uh, excite uh, water in our bodies and it begins to produce more high grade energy and will uh, feel bet much better after all these uh, problems are resolved. Thank you very much. I'm over, Dmitry. Okay. Thank you.
you can stop sharing yeah okay Okay, a wonderful lecture by Vladimir Vayekov and well, as always, as usual, it's already a tradition, a, tra a tradition for 24 years. It's almost quarter of century, you know, um, you are giving these wonderful lectures about yeah. the magnificent properties of water and every year there's something new. And I consumed and I uh, also advise you to consume tons of bicarbonate aqua solutions okay <laughs> excellent excellent so we will uh gather the questions to you and uh people will okay. have the opportunity to <laughs> ask them at the q a session this is some kind of magnesium uh water i think yes yeah. and bicarbonate also you can see bicarbonate uh -huh. magnesium uh, or uh, magnesium carbonate is one bicarbonate is one of the most healthiest water so please drink it okay excellent excellent thank you very much